thing. We're on Facebook hey. now if you want to share on Facebook too. Um, welcome to, I don't remember what week this is, 28, 29, 28, 28 week 28 of Homemade with TGP. I'll have to move this back and forth, the camera. Um, so welcome. Tonight we are making falafel from the rest. The recipe is actually from the website, The Nasher. So <laughs> It's my second time making it. And again, I apologize. <laughs> um, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to, most of us here, we're all baking it. We're gonna set our preheat our ovens to 450 degrees. Um, if we were frying them, you'd put an inch of oil into your frying pan, but since we're not frying it, we'll make it a little healthier. All right, so you're gonna take- Not putting an inch of oil into a frying pan. One can, one 15 ounce can of chickpeas that you have drained and whatever. So I'm taking them and I'm putting them, my can into my food processor. Mm. Along with four cloves of garlic that I have pre-chopped. Oh, and now I'm gonna smell like garlic. And a shallot also chopped. <sighs> and two tablespoons of chopped parsley. And then you're also going to add in ground cumin, which I'm not a fan of, but I'm gonna add it in anyway. A, te a teaspoon of ground cumin. Dina. Yes. Remember last week you looked in to see what the ingredients was in my sasson, but I went and looked today. So this was a different one. This does not have cumin in it, but it is oh, very good. good. Yeah, so I'm going to add so, that. You want me to the up which way? I know I said I was going to put in a Look teaspoon of the cumin and the seasoning, but I am not. I'm putting in half a teaspoon because I am not that dangerous. Oh, I don't. The lettuce like just squares. I'm allergic to a lot of them. So I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of that and then half a teaspoon of coriander, even though you're supposed to put it in one teaspoon. Because the smell is just a little overwhelming, just like that for me. <laughs> and then you just put in like a little bit of salt and pepper for taste. So I'm just gonna do like, I also don't cook with pepper, so I'm just gonna put a little salt in. So, Dina? Yes. So, when I started making falafel back in the early 70s, I learned how to make it uh, back then. And I'm going to show you something for those of you who fry or don't fry. Can you see these implements? This is to make falafel. Oh, yeah. Now, there are two kinds. One, This one makes like a little patty. And the other one, uh, and the other, the other ones that you say make a little ball. But what I learned to put in is that in addition to chickpeas, use fava beans. It's great. In, these, in Hebrew, it's called ful. So, um, so garbanzo beans, uh, chickpeas, and, and fava beans. You can mix the two of them. Um, and in addition, uh, there, the Egyptians use a lot, a lot of parsley, a lot more parsley. And... Um, uh, it it colors it uh, uh, you know greener on the inside and the out and if you and it gives you that parsley taste it's um when it fries up i've never baked them but i'll try it uh, i'm going to try it another time in my air fryer um but but just wanted to share those extra extra things you can put in favorite you I have a question. I'm sorry. I have a question. Did you say to put in the flour yet or you did not say to put the flour? 
Uh, no, I did not. But yes, you're supposed to. So thanks for reminding me. <laughs> no problem. I'm not using flour. I'm using potato starch. So I'm going to try to keep it um, gluten free. So let's see what happens. Gotcha. Oh, so it's like. Wasn't there also shallots in the recipe? Shallots? Shallots. Uh, yeah, I chopped them. Those were the second thing. I did the pe the the garlic. chickpeas, then the garlic, then the shallots. Oh, I didn't hear that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So now two tablespoons of flour or potato starch. I'm sorry, phone. Oh, and I used to reminder, put, Ellen. <laughs> I also used to put in um, either I used to put in seltzer, or or you could put in baking soda. Was it baking soda or baking powder? But uh, what? But seltzer uh, to to moisten it down. Gotcha. Well, now I'm just gonna pulse. You're gonna pulse it until um, it's like a coarse. It's coarse and mealy. Okay, so I'm just gonna put that on there. And why aren't you working? watching Law and Order? <laughs> Maybe it needs that piece. Guilty as charged. <laughs> well, mute yourself, lady. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Yes, boss. I'll mute. <laughs> okay. So now you're just going to pulse until it becomes coarse and mealy. And you don't want to over blend it. Hey, Dina. Yes. You look good. Thanks. <laughs> so I think that's good. I mean, I'm going to do it a little bit more. I don't like chunks of onion, so. <laughs> Okay, so now that that is, has been done that way, you're going to, a little blade because you don't want to hurt yourself. And you're now going to make little patties. So you're going to take, a, I'm going to use my teaspoon, my tablespoon to make a bit of a patty. So I'm going to roll it into a ball and then flatten it out so it's like a small little patty. And I'm gonna place it on the plate. So now you're gonna do this, you're gonna put the plate in the oven, in this, I'm sorry, the plate is gonna go into the refrigerator for about five to 10 minutes. So that way it will stay together. And it'll, so it, normally what happens is when you fry them, they sometimes fall apart. So according to the, notes on the recipe. Um, so um, I'm going to, and also when some people, when they bake them, they fall apart. So just flatten out some discs and put them on the plate. And then I will put it into the refrigerator. You can also, Ellen, use, also make them into Are balls. you guys all up at the same part? I'm still, um... Mixing mine. What's the consistency supposed to be like? Can I see your consistency? Yeah. Hold on. Let me just put this little patty down. Okay. So it's more of like a crummy meal. Like okay. a crummy, it's crummy. It's crummy? Okay. Mine's kind of crummy. All right. Yeah. It's like kind of crummy. And so, Look, no matter what, it's not as good as Naomi's or Shimon's or Benji's or any of those places because they're all professionals and they've been doing this forever. So, <laughs> so this is going to be just a little quick, healthy option, you know, for you to do at home. And the positive is the recipe doesn't make too many. So you have, you, you won't have too many to, you know, left over. You'll be eating them. Trust me.
Okay, I'm just gonna make a few more and then I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator and I'll show you what we do with the pan for baking. I'm not gonna put salt on them. Is that okay? Salt? Yeah. I have to say the funny thing is I have one full chickpea left in my food processor, which I find to be a little funny because who would have thought? <laughs> okay. It's like, it's like popcorn. A question? I said it's like when you make popcorn. Is there what? It's like when you make popcorn, there's always one or two. You always have that one pop. extra, right? So I'm taking my little patties and I'm going to put them in the refrigerator for now. I'm just going to wash my hands. Oh, I bit. need um, either seltzer or baking soda, which is the yellow box. So, Dina? Yes. When do you deal with the flour? Does it go in before you pull it? Is it after rolling the soda? So try it. The flour goes into the into the mixture. The it does. Okay. Mixture. And yeah. then also, if I'm using the seltzer or baking powder, I guess as well. I guess so. Yes. yes. Okay. Do we have any seltzer? I take some if we have. Okay. I'll look downstairs. Yeah, I think there's some in here. Then I take so what? So we're still just not okay. We're still adding not seltzer and stuff. That's great. I didn't know about adding seltzer. Why do you add seltzer is the question I have. Does it lighten it up? I think. Yeah, it lights it up. Makes it, yeah, it makes it a little fluffy and uh, uh, on the inside, a little lighter. Even with matzo balls, you can use seltzer You're, to make yes. it fluffier. Moshe, right. is it uh, baking powder or baking soda? I don't remember. Soda. Hey. What? So soda. So soda. Baking soda? OK. Yes. Soda. And the baking soda does the same thing? Yes, it will. But I, uh, but I always used to use uh, just a just just a spritz of um, of uh, of regular seltzer. You know, just. All right, I think I may have that. Yeah, it smells good. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. How do you look? Yeah, I guess I should have seltzer in the house for stuff. Uh -huh. I just don't drink it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's genius. All right, can um, I get it up? Dana, okay, don't forget like, the you bet and the milk. <laughs> Oh, listen, <laughs> I, I have the you bet and I have the milk. I don't have the seltzer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, run some over you right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does that make an egg cream? Is that what that is? Those yes. Are the, yes. But you right. need yes. siphon bottles, not from the regular bottle. Correct. Life and bottle Correct. That. So we used right. to get those those bottles when I was a kid. I remember that. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, they always got delivered and you couldn't drop it or else. <laughs> Dead meat. I'm thinking this whole morphing is off. So I'm just waiting for everyone to catch up. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I you know what, Dina? I never put ketchup on my falafel. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Israeli thing, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen, are you caught up or? I'm still making my balls. My my balls that I made into patties are in the fridge. Why oh, we excellent. why do we put them in the fridge? So we put them in the fridge because it keeps them together. So like if you were to throw them into like a big fry deep fryer thing, yeah. they might fall apart. So not that we're frying, but it's still good to do that. Well, do, um, Ellen, Ellen, do you remember yeah. when I was making the gefilte fish and between batches, I put it in the fridge so it would set. That's what this is doing. God, by the way, they I smell also do that good. with my chocolate peanut butter pie. Yeah. You have to put it, I put it in the freezer in between layers. So, um, Deborah Dunchik, what, 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 what part are you up to? Hang on. I'm almost done mixing. Okay. I think Tina makes that. Tina, are we using the, the food processor again for the tahini? We are not because your tahini should be like a sauce already, right? And then I'm putting, but we're mixing the garlic in. Oh, I was going to put it in the in the food processor till the garlic goes smaller. No. Mm. 
I forgot Did about the that? garlic. I don't know. I need to cut more garlic for that. I could do that yeah. now. <laughs> but I'm doing. I have like garlic and a paste. Oh, yep. There she is. You know, Tina. Yeah. Tina, everywhere I've eaten Tina, it's always this, it's always very thin. I mean, not when it, you know, when you when you mix it as a as a sauce, it's always very, very thin. And I never used to put actual garlic. I take garlic powder or garlic uh, normally garlic powder to uh, to to give it a little extra flavor. But I never use fresh garlic in my tahina. You know what? Last week when I was making this to try out the recipe, I also used garlic powder. But I want to try it with the garlic. That's you know. All right, let me know. I mean, I'm just gonna literally chop it. It's very fine. So it's I used gonna... Dorina's uh, tahina recipe, which uses the chopped garlic. But you can this, also yeah, buy this, this is the one that has the chopped garlic. This frozen cubes of garlic. <laughs> and now we oh, should have that. Really? You just have to defrost it. Yeah. <clears throat> I could have also gotten a jar of of uh, chopped garlic. Yeah. You get a jar. It's all good. I'm just chopping it right now. Okay. And I'm sure I'll probably wind up still putting in garlic because I like garlic. Well, it's not a bad thing. My feeling is you can never have too much garlic. I agree. But then I realized you can. I did that once. So. <laughs> well, if it's not cooked, that might be a little extreme. Yeah. Okay, so once we're all up to the next part, let me know, because the next part is when we're going to be used, putting the pan in the oven. So, because we need to time it. So I'll be chopping, we'll, making the, we'll be making the tahina sauce that while okay, this okay. is in this the oven. Here, my other, I put it in my hand, because I was afraid I would, um, I hope I could. Right. I feel like I get it off. 17 flights of stairs. Uh, Ellen, Deborah, and Deborah, are yes. you guys ready? Almost. To... My um, patties are in the fridge. Excellent. So now what you're going to do is yep. you're going to take a sheet pan, uh huh, and stick and stick it in the oven for five minutes. Okay. So I'm sticking that in there, and I'm putting my timer on for five minutes. While we do that, we're going to make our sauce. Oh, I made that already. Oh, you already made it? All right, you're ahead of us then. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I was behind on the other stuff. <laughs> OK, well. Dina, Dina, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Um, you didn't have the garlic in when you were mixing up the patties. How do you put it in now? No, I did have the garlic in the patties. This is for the tahini sauce. I didn't have the garlic. So I always forget to chop the garlic for the tahini sauce. I make it for the, I do it in the, in the patties already. That's, that was done. It was just this. So this so, right, now I, right, right now I have a pan with nothing on it in the oven, right? Correct, for five minutes. Okay. Okay, so then what you're going to do with your sauce is you're going to put your chopped garlic, which I just quickly chopped a little bit. Put your garlic and half a cup of the sauce, the tahini sauce. I'm going to shake the thing up because it's kind of weird. Probably settled. What? Settled, maybe? The oil rises up? I don't know. It's just, just in general, it was weird last time. And... All right, so half a cup of this. Then a tablespoon of lemon juice. 
Hey, are you guys a- so a tablespoon of lemon juice. And then you need to get two tablespoons of warm water. So let me run my sink for a bit. So one, two tablespoons of warm water. Now you might need more water um, as you whisk it. So, so I'm gonna start whisking it and then I'm supposed to add some salt, like it's a little bit of salt for taste, but I'm just gonna whisk this first. Here I'm adding my salt. <coughs> You see the first first bit with just two tablespoons of water came out very thick. So I'm gonna add more water, one tablespoon at a time. Because you want it to be you know yeah. liquidy. I don't know if it's recyclable. When it's you go to oh, I'm not muted. Simone's or Naomi's. This is very much like hummus, so which is not what we want. <laughs> so I'm adding now I'm on my fourth tablespoon of water to get it to the right consistency, which I don't know why they don't just tell you to add more tablespoons because right away. Maybe it's because I have hard water because I live in Queens. I don't know. Um, so this still isn't the right consistency. So I'm gonna add another tablespoon of water. Ellen, how are you doing? Deb, Deb. I think I ended up using five tablespoons of water and now it's finally the right consistency. Yeah, that's what I'm at. Well, my yeah. tahini paste or whatever this is, is very thin on top, thick on the bottom. So I'm trying to stir it up first. Gotcha. So my timer just went off to take the tray out of the oven. Oh, I never put my tray in. Huh? I'm still making my uh, my patties. And no parchment paper, no nothing on it? No, to put it in the oven for five minutes. Okay. So we'll heat up. Then what you're going to do is, um, Ellen and Deborah, you're going to take oil and pour it onto your tray, on your pan. And just... Oh, okay. Gotcha move it around. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, let's see if this is enough. And then you're going to stick that into the oven for another minute. Okay. Perfect. So now... I'm going to take my plate of patties out of the refrigerator because when that 40 seconds is done, because it's almost over, um, I'm going to put the patties on the, the pan with the oil. And then you cook it for six minutes and then you flip them over and cook them for another six minutes. And they come out, I swear to you, they are like they're fried. They're, they're crispy on the outside. And delicious. Good. So, are we taking them out of the um, out of the fridge right now? While that yeah, one I minute just took is... mine out of the fridge. Excellent. Does anyone have any other questions while we're waiting to? Do you know what does the sauce look like now? How liquidy is it supposed Hold to be? Hold on one second. My timer just. Okay. Let me just put these on the, okay. on the pan and then I'll show you my sauce. So now 
it's sizzling as I'm putting my patties down. You know what kind of, the, of oil did you use? I use regular vegetable oil. Okay. Because that's what I have in the house. Okay, so I'm just gonna put these in the oven for six minutes, then I'll show you my sauce consistency. Okay, so now my sauce is more of a drippy, runny sauce like it's supposed to be. So that's how it goes. <laughs> So does anyone else have any questions or comments? Anyone want to tell me about their favorite trip to Israel? Because I can tell you I've only been once and it was for a wedding. And it was, I was like five nights. So I need to go back. <laughs> I went on my honeymoon. Oh, that's awesome. Three weeks. Did the desert trip, the Sinai still belonged to Israel. So you know how long ago that was. We went on a uh, Jeep tour of the Sinai, slept wow. in tents or out in the open. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. I don't know if they do it in the Negev, but what they did in the Sinai was just. Wow. Anyone else you want to tell me about their trip to Israel or? Uh, I remember. How did what? I do that? Where'd you go? Um, there I am. Um, I was just trying to get the volume up a little higher. Um, <laughs> the first time, Ar no, the first time I went to Israel with Arnie um, was in 1984, and we ended up having to take a bus from Cairo to Israel because all the flights were full. And it was Passover and Easter the same night. So um, we got in and our cousins who lived in Tel Aviv took us to the, tel to the falafel stands and all the, how many Nixons were there? There were like, you know, like if you see a fruit cart on the street, well, there were all these things you could put in your falafel. And I had only heard of sauerkraut and cabbage and Israeli salad before that. I was so amazed, all the different pickled vegetables <laughs> they put in. Yeah. It was the best. <laughs> That's our standard of falafel. Well, but I Queens, have a standard for schnitzel. Nana Good Eats? What? Nana Good Eats in the North Shore Farms Shopping Center in Whitestone. Oh no. It's kosher meat and falafel, Israeli. And it's really, oh. really tasty. Oh, it's delicious. It's near my, you know, it's near my house. I it's love near that. Your house. But don't don't you think it's really good? Ben, oh, it's really audience? good. And the guys yeah. really they're really nice in there. Get like, we've eaten there, Bonnie. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think you and I went there. Yeah, you did. Delicious. With, with Pat. Right, right. It was good. It was really good. It was really good. I've gone there with Allison and get, I get like the platter to split with her. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> well, I have a high Very standard small, for though. chicken schnitzel now because of my trip to Israel. Yeah. There was some like hole in the wall place in Tel Aviv that we went to. I couldn't even tell you the name of the guy, the place, but it was just the most delicious schnitzel I've ever had. Compares. <laughs> My first trip was in 1978 with the family and they were filming the Big Red One and we were staying for a week in Tripolia for like a restive week after a week in Jerusalem and a week outside of Tel Aviv. And we met Lee Marvin and um, Mark Hamill in the hotel. That's because so crazy. We the movie, and they were both in that movie. So Lee Marvin was drunk up his board. <laughs> and uh, and the rest of it was Israel, and it was wonderful. But that was like a very different experience that you never expect from an Israel trip. Wow. Anyone else? Who's been to Israel more than once? Everyone but Dina. <laughs> 
Did I want to say today's service worked out really well? I agree. I a lot of people joined from Zoom as well. It was great. It was, it was a good nice. service. It was nice to see everybody. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I agree, Deborah. Yeah. You should check out the pictures on Facebook, on our Facebook page. I did. They it's already did. nice. <laughs> <laughs> I snuck into really I snuck into the building. The ballroom of their bill of their building looks out onto the playground, so I was able to go out there, up into the ballroom, and take pictures of the group, which was nice. Oh, oh nice! So, <laughs> so Jose I said think when the last time this that I got did an Israel trip? I'm sorry. The, my question was, when was the last time the synagogue did an Israel trip? 2014, I think. Oh. oh, 2012. No, 20, no, 2014. It was 2014 because David went in 2010 and then I went with my mother and Connie in 2012 and then just my mom and David, of course, in 2014. And that was it. We went to do a 2016 and that didn't pan out. And then, of course, the most recent ones. Right. All right, well, hopefully in a couple of years, we'll be able to go again on a group trip. Because that would be nice to go with you guys. <laughs> okay, so the first half of it is cooked on one side. I'm flipping them over. What are you using to flip them? My tongs. Okay. You said six minutes aside, correct? Yes. Okay, because I haven't gotten in the oven yet. <laughs> This is hard to do. <laughs> okay. All right, so now I'm gonna put them back in for another six minutes. Look on, I took off my sweater again. And then once they're done, you can put them in pita. Um, you could just make a platter with stuff on it, you know, with different, uh, salads and stuff you could you know make it the way you want i personally am just gonna have a little sauce and one or two and then freeze the rest <laughs> my next question, can you freeze them <laughs> so um yeah because i've already uh i actually ate dinner before making these so i wouldn't eat them all <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. eat these for dinner. Um, does it make? Um, this, I made, I think there are about 12 to 15 patties that I made. But I, I made 12. Make, yeah. Um, when, when I was in Israel and we had falafel, when you opened it up, it was like green inside, which mm -hmm. I wasn't used to. And I heard a say something. I don't know if he's still on. If you put more um, parsley in it, I guess it would be greener inside. Exactly. Right? I put more I parsley so. in it. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. show you my when they come out if they um come out before we end this. But I put a lot of parsley in because when you redid her things, I don't know, kebabs, meat, mini meat, meatloaves, whatever you want to call them, I put you know all the parsley and it was good. So I put extra in this one. But my sauce is very thick. Ellen, you had that issue too, right? Yeah, use a lot of water. I used a lot of water. You know, I it's just five thinking. tablespoons. Yeah, I used five tablespoons. I was just thinking that I have frozen some of the kebabs from last week. Oh. So I could actually have defrosted some of those, and then we could have had kebabs and falafel. And nice dinner. dinner. Yum. I and actually am making, I'm actually making turkey kebabs too, because I had turkey in the refrigerator that needed to be nice. cooked. I, I, 
I made beef for me and I made turkey for Alan and the beef are all gone and the turkey, the turkey is, we still have a lot more, but they're delicious. Uh, I gotta try this again. When I was in Israel the first time, we were out, we were outside of Machane Yehuda and we were getting falafel and I had no way of ordering falafel. I didn't know what to do. Alon Futterman was there with me. Uh, Ruth Futterman's grandson. He was, I think, a teenager then. And all I said to him was, how do I order? He said, what do you want? So it was salad, falafel, chips. I said, well, that's it. Chips are French fries. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Gail, were there lots recently. and lots of choices? What? Were there lots and lots of choices of things yeah, to uh, add to uh, your uh, flock? Eventually, every, when I went to um, uh, Machane Yehuda, um, uh, no, um, not there, other falafel places, then I became, you know, it, it was easy to order and get whatever you want. But right. this was a little stand, so I was a little intimidated. Gail. Yeah. When we went with Thaler, there was a place where we got falafel. It was so good. On Ben Yehuda Street? Yes. Yes. Got down on Ben the Yehuda. Hill. Down the, right down the hill. I forgot the name of it. If it was on the right, it was Mushika. Right. Oh, when you man, go down the hill, good. right on the right side of the second street. Down. Yeah, Mushika. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. unbelievable. It really was. It was unbelievable. It, was, it melted in your mouth. Right, and there, you know, they have all the choices there. And if you couldn't say what you wanted, you would just point. <laughs> right, right. That's what was the best part about it. Judy, you remember that place? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Sure did. Wasn't there a pizza place in King Paul Moshiko's? Probably. There was. Yeah. Today, I don't remember I was where. I was on a webinar today and they, for about an hour and a half of uh, Machane Yehuda. And one of the stores was a spice store and the parrots and they sell the jaws of the parrot. They put them together and sell them. So was, I don't remember the name of the store. But interesting spices. Right. What's the difference between Ashkenazi and Sephardi? Spice. A hundred percent true. I think you took that from Stissel. No, no. I just Stissel, finished. they said, well, they like their food a little spicier. I know. I remember that. I just finished uh, the last episode, you know, the last season. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ellen, how much time is on your... <laughs> I've got one minute to go. What about everybody else? Okay. So everybody baked? Everybody who's making it baked today. Yeah. If you Mine are very yeah. soft. Should I bake them longer on one side? Uh, when you split, uh, did you do it for six minutes? Yes, and they're, they're, they're really soft to try and flip. No. After the second six minutes? No, the first six minutes. I can't. That's okay. I, you can flip. If you can flip, well, try it for a little longer if you need to. You put it for 450? Yeah. All right, try it a little longer, like a minute or two. All right. So, okay, 12, 11, 10 seconds left. Okay, mine are just getting turned over, so. So, Dina. Yes. If um, if we were going to do the frying, not that I ever do the frying, but what would it, what, what would the instructions have been? So, if you were to fry it, you put, um, you would put a pan... Uh, oil, uh, like an inch of oil in the pan, and you would just fry it for like a few a few minutes until it gets all brown and crunchy on all sides. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paper towels to get the oil off of these, and then I'm going to see they're still a little soft, but that's okay because they're baked. They're still healthier. Um, interesting because last time they actually came out more crunchy so maybe it could use a few more minutes but just so you can see mm. they're delicious looking mm -hmm. and I'm going to stick them in for a few more minutes actually just to 
Get them a little crunchier. Yeah, Dina, that's what I did. I just put it back in for two more minutes. They're a little soft, but they smell delicious and they look good. They smell really, really, really good. good. Mine are a little orange because of my, <laughs> my famous Saison. I'm a little orange. So that's <laughs> so, but that's basically how it's supposed to look. And you just, you know, make the sandwich. If you want a sandwich, if you want a platter, you can platter it. Um, add some sauce. I actually will probably put like a little, I love when I used to go to Hoppy Ska, you get a plate of hummus with like the tahini in the middle and then, oh, so good. <laughs> so I probably will do a little bit of that mixture with my falafel balls or patties. So that's it. Any questions? A lot of the falafels are green inside. What? A lot of falafels are green inside. Yeah, they probably use more parsley than we use. Um, maybe maybe scallions. I don't know, but something to make them really green. But I don't like. I think it'd be easier to buy the frozen cube parsley because that is really super chopped, and then you can just put it in. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So next week you'll get the email tomorrow. But next week we're learning how to make shakshuka. Uh, my friend Esther Dubow, who's a teacher at Schechter, Long Island, is going to teach us, um, and she's wonderful. We're going to love her. You guys are going to love her. She's so great. Um, Dean, and Dean, can you explain what the that? recipe for it? Shakshuka is like a tomato sauce with eggs in it. I believe. I don't. I've never <laughs> had it. To be eggs. honest. Yeah. 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 Like you, you cook, cook crushed tomatoes and stuff, and with some mm. garlic. I guess garlic and yumminess, and <laughs> and then you uh, add, you cook eggs in it, like um. Like, kind of like really good. And I've never had it. Yeah, it's like over easy. I ate them every day in Israel for breakfast. Um, I have a, like one of my dear friends live, uh, was, you know, uh, is from this country, but he's, uh, he's half Israeli for the, just because of how well he makes shakshuka and he'll feed an army of people with a batch. Wow. <laughs> now he would be, right. he would, if you've already got somebody to cook it, that's I fine. do, I do. I have someone. So. Um, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. You'll get the email with the ingredients list and with the recipe from tonight and the video, the link to the video for tonight. And you can also check out all the videos on our YouTube channel and our face are uh, on our Facebook page and also on our website. And Dina, thank you for jumping in and doing this because you became a falafel master in a week. So we really thank you for doing this one. <laughs> I'm not a falafel master at all. <laughs> but well, at least I now know how to make it if I'm ever hungry <laughs> and craving falafel, which is really much easier to just go to Naomi. You know, with, with, without frying it, a falafel is very, very healthy. There's absolutely nothing bad in a falafel. Totally. Actually, yeah. kind of yeah. nice to know. But, but yeah. you know, but if you don't, and if you don't get to eat very many of them, or if you eat too many of them, you know what happens? I don't think I want to know. The falafel. Hey, Dina, if you can't falafel. fry it, can you air fry it in a ninja? Yeah. yeah so, so tomorrow what you're going to get in the, in, in the recipe is not only the fry, the real recipe calls for the frying instructions. I've added in the baking and the air frying instructions. Fantastic. That's a, that's what I want to say. Because Deb's, my is, feeling is the air fryer every recipe should clean? have three different ways to do it. The actual way, the healthy way, and the air frying way. Which and is I feel healthy. like if you buy anything that's frozen, you need they need to now put air frying on that box. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I air fried blintzes the other night. That was quite exciting, but I didn't cook it long enough. So, uh, <laughs> gotta keep on trying. Yeah. Really yeah. Is Deborah <laughs> or Witz's thing next sa Sunday after cooking? Oh, and next week after our cooking <laughs> class, we have the wonderful. Where'd she go? Deborah Abramowitz. She left. No, there she, she is. Deborah Abramowitz is teaching at eight o'clock. So I told I told my friend Esther. She has to be done by 7.55. <laughs> so we will, at 8 o'clock, Deborah Ramos is going to explain, teach us all about Jews and Japanese. 
like are you that, staying on are we staying on the zoom for it or no it we're going zoom? to a different link you'll get oh, that in okay. the it's uh, an email went out today with upcoming oh yeah adult education that. events and that was one of them also irene opener is teaching a class on music on wednesday night which sounds amazing it does um and then there's also um ellen biller's doing her book group in may so there are three stories that sound fascinating they're all there are links in the email and if you need a copy physically mailed to you, just let me know. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dina. Pauline, Pauline, Susan, and um, uh,